Hello, my friend. Have you ever wondered what it means to be saved? Or maybe you've wondered, why should I be saved? Or what am I being saved from? Well, I'd like to give you the answer from the Word of God. Now, the Bible is God's Word. It has been given to us as a revelation of God to mankind. And so it gives us all the answers that we need for this life. And so I would like to answer these questions. The first question I'd like to answer is why should I be saved? Why is this important at all? Well, there are three reasons why we need to be saved. Number one, we all need to be saved because we are all sinners. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That tells us that we fall short of God's perfection of holiness. And the Bible goes on to tell us in the same chapter that all the world will be guilty before God. It goes on to also say in Romans chapter 3 and verse 10 that there is none righteous, no, not one. No one can be good enough on their own with their own good works to merit favor with God or be justified in His sight. There's no way because we are all sinners. This goes all the way back to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden when they disobeyed God. And that sin nature has been passed on to humankind from that point until now. So we're all sinners. The second reason why we need to be saved is because there is a penalty or a punishment for our sin. God does not acquit the guilty. We all have a penalty that must be paid for our sin. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, For the wages of sin is death. Do you know why we all die? We all die because that is the punishment for our sin. That is the physical death that we experience when we go to the grave. But the Bible teaches that it doesn't end there because Hebrews chapter number 9 and verse 27, the Bible says that it is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment. Dear friend, after we pass through the door of death, we will enter into God's presence to be judged by Him. And at that time, our sins will either have to be paid for by us, or they will have already been paid for by Christ, as I will show you in a little bit. But we will all stand before God in judgment. And the Bible says to those who don't know Him, in Revelation chapter 21, in verse 8, that there is a place called the second death, and that is hell, and that is the abode of all who do not know Christ. Dear friend, I don't want you to go there, neither does God. And therefore, He made a way that we would not have to be punished for our own sin. And I will tell you that good news in just a moment. But the third reason why we need to be saved is not only that we are all sinners and that there is a penalty for our sin, but then thirdly, we are hopeless without Christ. We are hopeless without Christ. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise. And the Bible then says, without God and without hope in this world. And so without Christ, we are all hopeless. And that's why we need to be saved. Because without Christ, we're hopeless. Because as we already said, we cannot gain merit or favor with God or justification in His sight by any good works or church that we attend or, or baptism or sacraments or anything that a person may think that will somehow merit them favor with God and save their soul. No, my friend, none of that will do. None of that will save you. But we are hopeless, completely hopeless without Jesus Christ. And so that's when we come to what is the good news. Because the bad news is three things. That we are all sinners, that there is a punishment for our sin, and that we're hopeless without Christ. But now, before I get to the good news of how you can be saved, I want to tell you what salvation is based upon. And in order to answer that question, we must go back 2,000 years to when Jesus Christ walked up the hill called Mount Calvary. And there He was crucified between two thieves. And the Bible says that they whipped Him and scourged Him, and then they crucified Him on the cross. And He was despised and rejected of men. And even on the cross, His Father God the Father turned His back on Jesus Christ so that He could take on the sin of the world. And as Jesus lay there, He said, as He hung there on the cross, 
He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. As Jesus hung there on the cross, what was He doing? He was taking the sin of the whole world. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 says this, For He that is God hath made Him, that is Christ, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. That's what Christ did for you. He took my sin and your sin on the cross so that we could be forgiven and cleansed of our sin. And what a marvelous exchange that is. He became our substitutionary sacrifice. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 2, in verse 2, And He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Jesus Christ suffered and bled and died on the cross for my sin, and for your sin and the sin of the whole world. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 5 and 6 explains it eloquently to us when the prophet under the inspiration of God says it this way, that he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him, that is Christ, the iniquity of us all. And then towards the end of the Bible, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, tells us that he bare our sins in his own body on the tree. Can you imagine that? That Jesus bare your sins in your own body on the tree. That's what he did for you. And Jesus Christ in his own words said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, verse 6. No person, man, woman, boy, or girl, can find salvation except through Jesus Christ. So we explain why you need to be saved. We explain what Christ did. Now, I would like to tell you how you personally can be saved. How can you be saved? You may understand these things, but how do you make it personal? And by the way, you have to make it personal. Knowing it is not good enough, but you must make it personal to yourself, to your life. You must make it personal. And so how can you be saved? I would like to give it to you in a three-step process that the Bible teaches to us very simply. Letter A, it will be ABCs. If you know your alphabet, then it'll be easy to remember. A, B, C's. Letter A stands for admit. You and I must admit that we are sinners and lost before God. We must admit that we are sinners and lost before God. There's no difference between you and I. We're all sinners and lost before God. That's letter A. We must admit it. Secondly, which is letter B, we must believe. We must believe. What do we believe in? We must believe in our heart. We must believe in our heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sin, that He was buried, and He rose again the third day. Without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, His death is meaningless. But He rose again and won the victory over death, hell, the grave, and sin. And because He did that, He made a way that we could have everlasting life in Him. We must believe that He died on the cross, was buried, and rose again. So A, admit. B, believe. C, we must confess Jesus Christ and call on His name. We must confess Jesus Christ and call on His name. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, this is how it gets personal. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. You must simply believe it with all of your heart and confess it with your mouth. You say, how do I do that? Call out to Him in prayer and ask Him to forgive you of your sin and save you. What does that mean? It means you must repent of the sin that you have committed and you must recognize that you're guilty before God. Turn to Him in faith, trusting Him to save you, and calling out to Him. That's letter C. Just confess His name and call out to Him, asking Him to save you. And the blessed promise in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13 says, Whosoever shall call 
upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You say, I want to do that. I want to call on Him. Well, pray in your own words. I'm not going to give you an exact prayer that you must pray. But I want to tell you this. You have to make it personal. Pray in your own prayer. Ask the Lord Jesus to forgive you of all your sin and save your soul. And if you do, He will save you. That's what the Bible teaches us. You know, it's beautifully wrapped together in that famous verse in John chapter 3 and verse 16. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What a beautiful verse. What does it tell us? That God loves us, that He sent His Son to die for us, and that all you need to do is believe in Jesus Christ, not just with the head, but with the heart. Make it personal. Give your heart and life to Christ. And dear friend, when you do that, the Bible teaches that He makes us new. He makes us new. And then there's a promise in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. If you've believed on His name and put your faith in Him, then dear friend, you can know, you can have blessed assurance in your heart that you're saved by the grace of God. And if you've never put your faith in Christ by calling on Him, repenting of your sin, and ask Him to forgive you of your sin and save your soul. If you've never done that, dear friend, I hope you'll do it today. hope you'll do it today. If you have questions or you need further help, my contact information will be in the description below this video. Call me any time of the day or night or email me. I would love to be a help to you. And then if this video has helped you in some way, maybe you're a Christian and it's helped you or it's encouraged your heart, I hope you'll share it. Share it with someone that needs it. And may God use it for His honor and glory.